unfolds here, specifically for RRQ, and what they've learned up to this point as we get ready for game four. All right, then let's jump right into it. Let's hesitate no longer. And knowing these two teams, they're going to be really fast on this. The Kaja, the Eve already banned out, the Joy, as well as the Wan Wan banned off the side of Echo. But this time, we are seeing that RRQ have decided to be on the blue side. Yeah. So let's see what that first pick is going to be. I'm expecting Eve or Carry. We'll see what Echo yeah. wants to leave up. They don't ban out the glue. I think we see yeah. RRQ take glue 100%. right away. And that means that Echo might be considering uh, banning out that carry this time. Or if they give it up, they now have better trades. Because when you pick up the carry on RQ's side, you can get the glue on Echo's side. So that's a better trade for Echo. Then again, they banned the carry. So you go, you go glue this time for RQ Hoshi. Or do you make a crown? I feel like I feel like even though glue is good, we've seen Echo whip yeah. out the dire off Grok. a couple of times. Yeah. Farsa Grok, I think, is the opening here. Farsa Grok? Okay, they got the Farsa. Let's see if this next one is going to be the Grok. Well. What else do you answer the blue with, right? There's uh yeah, I do agree with you that Dairoth is yeah. actually gonna be a good pick. I think they're gonna, they are going to pick it third, uh, their third pick, because there's a big chance that RQ Hoshi will just ban it out in the second phase. So maybe that's the last pick of the first phase for Echo. For now, they're really thinking about the Grok. I do wanna say though, those uh, the team that holds the Grok in the series loses the game. So that's That's what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna stick <laughs> so by far, that too. Stats don't lie though. <laughs> Games one and three, that's RQ. And game number two, that's Echo. Oh boy, I can't wait to see the overall stats okay. for Grok, but uh, hey, you know, Lapa Lapa actually getting locked in here. I, I'm kind of into this. Yeah, it's good. It's good because Sanford is really amazing with it. And knowing that um, Arki Hoshi kind of, uh, they play the game like they wanted to always peel for their backliners. Yeah. That's how Clay and uh, Skylar was successful with Arki Hoshi. Lapu Lapu counters that too, so that's maybe the idea here for it. Usually in that matchup too, the glue lapu lapu matchup, I would say more often than not, I've seen glues get that first blood. And still, that is a, a very simple step yeah. for RQ to get that momentum they need because we've seen, uh, I mean, it, the glue in the hands here of R7 causing havoc in back line, especially if he gets that early momentum going. That's uh, a great step to success here and taking us to game five. And now with the next two picks, look at that. They are going to go with a more proactive roam option. Like we were saying, they're going to lock in the Franco here, and it's complemented with this Faramis pick. Okay. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. I could be wrong about this. Cho, thoughts on this, Wolf? Mm, Cho could be good for Echo, just because of the fact that it's a flex pick. So you give Vin a hero that he excels with, his counterpart, Yaoi, will get their own uh, oh, pick, but instead they go Claude. Interesting direction that Echo has decided to take it. Instead of looking to mirror RRQ, this time they're going to be playing for their own gold lane, and I think a lot of resources are going to be dedicated, making sure that Sanford is almost guaranteed to be on the weak side. A little sad to say the least, but I feel like Sanford has kind of proven himself 1v2, arguably 1v4 sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, I agree, and at the same time I'm wondering, are they going to be, okay, there is the Beatrix ban, so really limiting the options here. For yeah, Skylar. Exactly. And you're looking for like a combo with the Franco, right? Hitting the Franco hooks, they're amazing. But you need damage still. Faramis will not be giving that to you. Maybe a few patches back, that will be the case. For now, both Brody and Beatrix would have been good in combination with this pick. So I wonder with how RRQ is going to supplement the initiations coming out from the Franco. Echo, however, they still have the Dyroth. If they want to pick it up, they, they can give it to maybe Carl TZ, but knowing that the Lapu Lapu is already picked up, it tells me maybe Echo will choose a different hero this time to answer the blue. Oh, I suppose, but the fact that they banned out Barai, I don't know, it feels like the headspace of RRQ is, hey, Carl TZ is still going to be the problem, we need to make sure that we can secure our objectives and maybe we can snowball out of Ooh. control from there, but as of yet, I mean, mid lane, still very open for RRQ, yeah. and we come back in, uh, towards Echo's side, they can easily lock their jungler right now. I don't know if they want to show their support this time. It's the Cho. It's yeah. the Cho? No, All right. Just in yeah. the world. Well, Give comfort where, uh, for both of your roamers. Now, RQ, they need, badly need early game damage here. Surely, you got already good heroes in your comfort picks. You need to give Albert a hero that can supplement the damage. And then, of course, Skylar with some early game um, early game damage as well to kind of pierce through the early stages so that they will not uh, suffer from, uh, from lack of damage in yeah. stages 
like many teams yeah. suffer from. You need that follow-up with the Franco hooks. But still, yeah. I mean, even the Cho is flexed, technically. We don't know if it's actually That's going right. in the hands of Yaoi or That's if it's right. going to be placed in the jungle again for Carl Tizi, right? So they're still leaving that mystery here. Look at that. We're getting uh, an advanced look, right? That's the Aerithil along with the Karina locked in here. Now, Aerithil doesn't have the best win rate. That is 14%. But still, how does this work, Wolf, with what they've drafted so far? They're all in an early game team fights. They're all in in the mid game. With this decision, oh. RRQ is saying, we are gambling, we're putting our tournament on the line in the first 10 minutes of the game. If we don't end it as soon as possible, they will not be able to force the series to game number five. Any oh. last thoughts here, Gideon? Honestly, I'm sweating because I agree with Wolf. This is a bit of a gamble. I will say that Echo's overall draft is looking good. You can feel that Yahweh is feeling it. As long as he blocks a couple of good hooks, it's kind of up to Vin, and hopefully he still doesn't have PTSD from M3. So we'll see how this is going to go. Biggest thing here is, like you guys mentioned, that, that timer, right? Ten minutes here. At the same time, this is Cho in the hands of Yahweh. We've seen incredible playmaking potential from that alone. And with Carl TZ picking up the Akai in the jungle, he's going to be just focusing on objectives. This could very well be the last chance here for RRQ. It's match point for Echo as we jump into game four. Well, Iritha wins the laning matchup for sure. I mean, you, you want to... It oh, is... Oh, um, oh, oh. We didn't get to see whether the hook landed or not. Did he get the hook or not? I don't know. We know for sure, though, that in the laning stages, Arki Hoshi does have the advantage. Because of the fact that they have Irithyl winning against the Claude, it just naturally, and the glue, of course, it's almost unbeatable in the laning stages. If they piggyback on that idea, like destroy Echo's timing with their early game spike, maybe Arki has a chance oh. or oh. extend the game number five. Echo knows it. Yeah, I mean, R7, there's nothing he can do. He's going to lose his battle spell here regardless. And arguably, I would say he's about oh, to die as base. well. And there we go. R7, just greeting out to hit that level 2, ends up dying for it. That's not how you want to start the game here for RRQ. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned it, Gideon, baited into it. And still, I mean, at that point, you have Sanford, who again got the MVP previous game, same hero now has an upper hand, but the kill going over to Sanji on this same hero, Farsa, is going to be deadly, but Benny Cutie... Yep, Vin, he wants to land it. Oh, the hook doesn't connect. Benny Cutie is able to just sidestep it in that time. The dive fails, they back away, and now the level fours are rolling in. R7 didn't respect the fact that Sanji rocks a flicker this time. That's why he was taken out. And the minor mistakes coming up from RQ. It's going to be... So I guess the, the word that you use here is compound interest, right? That's <laughs> what we are have to take note if you're an RQ. Yeah, now now look at this situation, right? Because because of that death, that does mean that R7 is go not going to hit his level 4 in time. The yeah. early proxy is going to make sure that they have priority. And now that if they can get mid to push, that would be ideal. But let's see how the situation plays out. It's now RRQ trying to get some kind of information as Albert now being oh threatened by Sanford. He might actually die here. Albert's still alive. Glue ends up oh, dying whoa. again. How did R7 die on the top side of the map? Sanji is able to pick him off. Talk about Sanford Whoa. and Sanji, the San San duo, just making waves here for Echo. Two minutes into the game, and this is a tough situation for RQ already. Oh it, I mean, yes, the gold lead isn't massive, but these minor decisions, these plays across the map, are going to cause waves throughout the game. Man, Sanford's maneuver after winning the top lane just because of the helm of Sanji. He's able to get level four before the turtle fight, uh, the, for the first turtle of the game. That allowed him to invade the purple buff and make a, you know, put some influence, put some pressure in the laning stage of RQ Hoshi. Oh, okay. and that's called TZ getting picked off immediately. Echo. Oh. oh, wait. Oh, oh, so very close. But here comes the Feather Ash. Oh, flickering forward. Again. He's guessing. Skylar is still alive. This could be a potential dive. Yaoi, he oh. wants it, he finds it, and gets the kick. Benny QT he almost finishes him off. Yaoi takes the kill, unfortunately. Finn finds the iron hook. Clay <laughs> pulls it back, kick it back and forward, and Albert will secure the kill. You see that? You can't get away, Yaoi. We've got two pulls. <laughs> he tries to run away, but also the highlight there is that Albert was able to pick up that right. kill. Big yes. pick up here at Wolf. 
So you saw that they were able to take out Carl TZ after what would likely be a snare coming out from Vin. Eventually, though, the dive, flicker in coming out from Sanji, forced uh, Skylar to be very low, and then Yaoi found the opening under the turret. Good thing though for RQ, they have found some traits with Albert getting two kills. Yep, and now they're going to be walking up. Echo looking to invade Albert, but they don't want to commit too much in this situation. Now, let's talk about the lane states, right? Because Vin, he's trying to make something happen. Oh, Clay, Purify. good. Purify doesn't get kicked out of position. Well, That's it's a good it. thing they have that. You were talking about the lane matchups here. I mean, this one specifically, Sanford's going to have the upper hand here. As we're seeing, I mean, R7's got to kind of make his way back from that deficit now in the early game. Again, Wolf, you called 10 minutes here, and it might turn out to be even less than that. But still, turtle up, RQ in position. Well, now Feathered Airstrike already being used super early on. They're just holding them hostage. They know that Sanford is ready to jump into the fight. Yaoi finds the initial engagement onto Albert. He's in trouble, but Sanford in oh. the back line making a tough Cartesi. Locks Albert down. He's finally dead. But now the rest of the team is here. R7 with the reinforcements. Yaoi might be in some trouble, but finally it's going to be Sanford who ends up a dive. R7 is able to secure his own kill onto Yaoi. And Benny QT is on the run. Skylar doesn't want to be a part of this fight, <laughs> but the Bound Mirror image is going to juke them out. Wow, what a move coming out from Benny getting out of there. And even the fact that he threatened for a kill onto three of the members of Ark Hoshi. It all started with a snack, <laughs> though. Well, okay. he's going to get pulled back. The Feathered Airstrike should be able... Oh, actually, it's there Skylar. we go. Magic Warship going to do the last tick of damage. Yeah, that burn does hurt, right? Oh. Able to secure the kill there, Sanji. That's three kills now for him. Yeah. Gonna profit off that, build in. Let's take a look at the items, how this is playing out here, okay. Wolf. So at least a little bit of uh, an advantage for the Karina, but with all the casual items like the Dreadnought Armor and the Molten Essence, there's no full item yet for the Karina. That's why they're not yet able to like, actually team fight with that. And then, of course, Irithel, you need more items. And Wind Talker, eventually, the second item will allow him to dish out the damage already. So that's the power strike that you're looking for for RQ. Benny QT, though, with zero deaths and two assists and the Avarice is now in a very comfortable spot. DHS, eventually Golden Staff. You can imagine his farming speed to go off the roofs when he gets that second item. Okay, let's talk about, I mean, okay. Oh, no. Yaoi, oh, he almost finds the angle of the kick, but Skylar is able to get out of position in time, locked out with the bloody hunt. Oh. Yaoi might be in some trouble here, but Call TZ, look at locked out Skylar. The Feather Airstrike is coming oh. in through, but the Call Altar keeps him alive until he's gone. Benny QT now, with all the green lights, comes in, and it's pretty much done for, for the side Ooh. of RRQ. They cannot survive this kind of aggression. What an execution from Echo. Absolutely good chain of events for Echo as they utilize their lineup oh. into its full potential. Yaoi with the flicker going in forward first. Surely he missed the way of the dragon, but that allowed Echo to get into position. Oh. Then goes Kautizi. Oh no. Oh. Albert, he's in so much trouble, but he should be tanky enough to actually survive all the damage. Before the it's turret. getting close. And here comes Sanji. If he sees him, he might be done with the Feather Airstrike. But on the top side, Call TZ all left all by himself, sacrificing his life for hire as Albert on his way to secure this turtle. What a move from RQ! Oh, wow. What a punish, in, in, indeed. You saw that they were, there was a lot of focus in the bottom lane. They found oh! the bin. He's gone. He's gone. Nothing to say about that. Well played. Great punish from Vin. RQ picking up wins where they can, and it also looks like a little bit whoa, miscommunication whoa. from Echo too. Yaoi has the vision here, but still RQ finding now. It's the two turtles they've got. They've got a little bit of gold lead. They just have to figure out the Sanji problem. If they can get that, shut him down, that's going to be another big play for RQ. He's going to walk up. They don't realize that he's there with the, because of the conceal. He throws up. Ooh, the hawk. R7, though. R7, he's pushing them out of position, but they're working as a team. This could be the turnaround now, but Call TZ can't seem to find the angle just yet. They're going to focus on their jungle and back away. <laughs> every, every bit is uh, <laughs> intense yeah. in this game. Because you're watching Vin, maybe he lands a hawk. I don't know, right? We're all watching. Oh, bloody hunt. Also called TZ already started off, and Yaoi's looking for an angle as Sanford jumps into the oh, back. No. Nobody can stop Sanji with his feathered airstrike except for the Call Altar. Skylar running for his live battle mirror. Image takes it back. Sanford now left to die. Yaoi can't help him out. Sanford is able to hop on over with the help of Sanji. R7 still on that chase. He's sick of it, but Yaoi is able to stop the aggression. Ooh. I can't believe 
no one died I from thought. that exchange. Like, how? <laughs> so much back and forth and just a masterful disengage from both teams there. But still, RQ holding on to this lead, they can play around with it, right? Still, if they can focus Sanji, if they can get a bloody hunt or a hook on him, they're gonna profit massively, Walt. There was a lot of explosions in there, and the surprise that nobody died. Bloody Hunt onto Garotizi, a prime target. You want to go onto it, but he survived afterwards. Then Benicu defies up BMI after the fact that the Paramus ultimate was already down. Killfred onto Aerithel, but wasn't able to find it as well. Oh, Yaoi, he's looking for an angle, but again, Vinda doesn't punish oh him just goodness. yet, knowing that he has the Shun Po. However, the mid lane, we do see Samford. He's getting himself out of there. Again, the aggression pushed back. This match is electric. It, this particular it, it, game, everything is so close. It's you can so feel high it. stakes. The, the tension, not just in the stadium, but in the game as well. Now this Lord being worked on here, half health. Oh, he hits Maltese, and now Sanford has to save it. Feather Dance as well, but R7 gets into the back line, forcing it out. They caught Irithel. Sanford has done it. He's dealt oh, the no. damage, and now RR2 are on the run. R7 is still in the middle of it, but a double kill coming in for Sanford is more than enough. Maltese is trying his best with a hurricane dance. He's trying to push oh, it, but he's it. It's too late. Benicuti in the middle of it gets three already. Sanford, a triple kill all by himself. Maniac make it, and now Albert the Focus gonna be able to survive, but his team is taken care of. Sanford literally destroyed RQ in there. The zone out with the combo. This is why they first picked this Lapu Lapu. He won his laning stage, he was able to pressure Albert, and then in the most important team fight for Echo, the first lord of the game, he was able to tag Albert, take him out with the bravest fighter, the combo, then gets a double. The kick from Yaoi allowed Echo to take that Lord, despite Kautizi being grabbed by that glue. The kick from Yaoi displaced Albert, and this is a massive victory for Echo. Right now, still Lord going to be on the bottom side. They're going to continue to get these turrets across the map, opening it up for themselves. Now they have the lead of 2K here. And I, at first I thought, you know, Sanford was going to say, hey, Sanji, you can get the MVP this game, but now they're competing for it. RRQ has to have an answer for this. Yaoi, he finds the kick onto Vin. They want to take one by one. And unfortunately for Vin, there's nothing he can do about it. Nicely played by Echo. Good bait from Sanford as the outer turrets will fall, and Echo will slowly creep their way in towards those inhibitor turrets. No big ultimates as of yet. RRQ can actually defend this relatively well here, unless Skylar gets picked off. Cartesi gets pulled back, but he's too tanky to actually be punished for now. Albert is walking very close to the fire, but again, one for nothing, all outer turrets are destroyed. All right, so RRQ still in this game. It's 4K ahead for Echo, though. The time is up that you mentioned, Wolf. You said 10 minutes. I think Gideon agreed. Yeah. We're now at almost the 12 minute mark here. Is there any saving grace in terms of items or even micro macro play that RQ can do to turn this game around here, Wolf? Well, they can, well, it's just really the hook coming out from Vin <laughs> if they find an opening, right? And I think that they are focusing on Cartesi so much. Surely it's great in the first few minutes of the game. Yeah, they can take out the Akai, but I think that come, it came to a point where when you go on to Carl Tizi, there's a lot of like supports coming out from Echo. And when you try to take attack a hero, you put a lot of resources into taking uh, out Carl Tizi. You just flicker? eventually get out damage. Look, and, let's, yeah. let's just move, move on from that. We're just gonna, let, yeah, let's look, let's look at Carl Tizi, man. He's, he's looking good, he's looking good. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. Other As than you the were saying. Uh, yeah, you were back, back to what you were saying. Even five seconds on Vince Flicker. Yeah, that was totally there, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All Wolf can say is, yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> All right. Goes back to the game. Yeah. Yes, that is a detrimental for this Lord fight. It's going to be up now in about six seconds here. Echo, great positioning as they get set up. You're going to have to keep an eye as well on Yaoi. He's going to be looking for the right target. Skyler having a very tough game on this year, though, even with that sprint. Play trying to get some vision. And it's the same as setup that we saw in the previous game, but this time it's just Yaoi in that top side rush. They're just Can RQ do this? They're just waiting for this fight. I mean, Echo is baiting it out. They're going to reset oh, top side. Yaoi fights the kick on to Skylar once again. Call Altar. It's not going to be enough, but they have a spin. Will lock down Vin once more. It's just timed out. And now Clay is just left all by himself. Left in the hands of Benny QT with two down. That's a free lord.
Yeah, we finding a big opening on the Skylar. I wonder how he got that, but Arky wanted to bait out the Lord and Echo just styling on them. It really looked easy for Yaoi to do it. I mean, that's just uh, at that point, you know, the, the positioning of Yaoi there, he knew that the best angle for Skylar to come from was that top side because you can just pop that sprint and kind of run around, hopefully to find a member of Echo, but it just didn't work out for them. Yaoi sniffed it out. He knew exactly where to be and they focused on Skylar. And again, this makes the, this begs the question is Irithil the weak link here in this lineup for RRQ? In, in the latter portions, I would say yes. You understand why they picked it up. It makes a lot of sense when they did, but they weren't moving as if they wanted to Irithil to be successful. Well, let's find out here at the very end as the inhibitors will fall. Feathered airstrike already down. Echo is going to take as much as possible. However, the mid as well as the top side have not collapsed at the same time. R7 is doing a very good job at keeping it alive, having a bit of a pillow fight with Call TZ. Nobody really winning there as the mid lane Yowie. now passed. But Yaoi, does he find the angle? He finds the kick on to Vin. They're trying to collapse on it. The bravest warrior is already in. But Skylar oh. slows them down with the Queen's Call. Heavy spin activated with the Call. Offside the backline being attacked, Alpert as well, trying his best feathered airstrike, comes back off a cooldown, but he gets stunned up, he has to move away, top side is already destroyed, and a 4v5 has been already down, falls into the favor of Echo, Benny QT not even participating in this entire sequence of events, and this could be a potential kill if they find the CC. Oh, Carl TZ, you're just teasing that way. Trying to go for it. Oh. I can't get the kick off to Albert. And now the Blazing Duet activated. Play still alive. Queen Kong trying to clear those waves as soon as possible. Sanford, you with the previous warrior again. We're seeing Set three point. ultimates. What's that day? Now in trouble. Has to use the wings by wings to get on out of there. The previous warrior is down. No more Sanford and the defense oh, complete. Wow. You can't imagine to be the shooting Skylar. Surely he died at the end, right? But it's difficult to play this era, though. Threat by Yaoi, threat by Sanford, threat by Call TC. Everybody targets Skylar. Eventually, after three tries with Sanford's opening, they have found him. And Neko, with all of the resources they have, they have so many ways to engage RRQ Hoshi. It looked really bleak for the Indonesian squad. Oh, uh, they was... had to pull everything just to survive there. Oh. Now, I mean, at that point, it looked grim. They held on, Whew. but at what cost? Again, back to the question, is this Irithil the weak link? And was there a better option here for a gold lane or a marksman pick? Because so far, it really has not been working out for RQ. I think regardless, the hardest part about this is that feathered airstrike coming in from Sanji. Like, it deals way too much damage. And unfortunately for Iritho, yes, you can be fast, go quick or go home. But in this particular case, walking up is way too dangerous. And Yaoi, I can't, I mean, what can you say? He just lands the kicks each time. Yeah. He, he literally says, just hit it. And he's like, yeah. okay, sure. How did he get his hands on the Cho again, right? I mean, that's a, another big question because you talked about it. One feathered airstrike takes Skylar to basically half health, if not one fourth at this point. So we're jumping back into the game here. Massive lead for Echo. Still looking to close this series out here. RQ trying to hold on to keep this series going to game five, but at this point, it's a looking bleak. Anything that sticks out here, Wolf, in terms of the items and how they can help here for RRQ? Uh, I think the lack of the blade armor on Karina, they only have it on Vin. I think they have they need to against the claw. That's the natural way to kind of counter it. While on the side of Echo, you have two blade armors on two frontliners, Karthus and Yaoi. What this does is to really nullify Skylar even more. He's even like, he's already scared about like the damage output and the initiations coming out from Echo, but even his unstoppable, you know, uncontrollable damage that you take out from the earth is so gonna be a threat. I think the biggest way they stay in this game is have another moment where Benny. they somehow get oh. the Lord here. Benny's, oh, Benny's there. Oh, with the the one with the trunch. He managed to survive for a little bit longer, allowing Sanford to actually turn this around onto Vin's head. They find the trade. It's not worth it. But Yaoi still has a way in the dragon. They can do something with this call. TZ in the middle of the fight. He's absorbing damage and now pinning the R7 against the wall. He's trying to get on out of there. And immediately, this might have just turned. They Benny know QT. where Benny is. Oh, do they know where Benny is? No, no. He, he's gonna recall out of there. He's gonna be fine, but this buys a little bit more time 
for RRQ and Echo. They see what's going on. Now because of the recalls, they're threatening the Lord. They've checked the brushes. They know nobody is there. And even Clay making sure that there is no angle for Yaoi to get on in. Look at Benny. It's going to come down to a 50-50 here. He's, Albert no. versus Carl Teasy. No. They reset it. Sanford is threatening Clay. Whoa. Okay, yo, Clay, you're getting too low. He's about to die. And Sanford Flick is for it as the rest of the team looks to push on forward. Oh, oh they're gonna get goodness. pushed out of the base here. You saw Benny Cutie also push in that mid lane. They have to respond, and this could because of those decisions and Clay being down. Echo now in a position to take the Lord. Way of the Dragon already onto R7. We can split, split, save him. Oh. No, the feathered air strike from Sanji able to take him out. Sanford oh. is on fire. Albert locked against the wall. A cult altar already popped. They're resetting the Lord just against the middle of this fight. Skylar is trying his best to dish out damage, but those blade armors are making a difference. Oh, and the Queen's Sanford. Call isn't enough. And Sanford gets his ult again. Clay has to get on out of there. Ghostbusters ain't enough. And Sanford is going to slowly make his way forward. He takes on oh. one, and now the end is nigh. Albert is still on the run. Can they do so anything about this? Oh, no. With so no. many minions on this side. Nice. Yowie is already down. Bloody Hunt already on to Benny Gucci, but Benny Gucci. Benny! 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 Benny has done it. Wow. A game to make history Ooh. once again. The Filipino dynasty goes on. The grand finals has been set. Echo loud, echo proud, GG, well played. The storm cannot be contained in this series. And a force to be reckoned with here, this echo squad. Definitely echo loud, echo proud. And it's a sad day for the fans of RQ in Indonesia, as unfortunately they won't make it to the grand final here in M4. Let me teach you a word that doesn't exist once again. Endable. Endable. It's not in the dictionary, but at least in Echo's vocabulary there is. They knew the call. There were so minions out there, ushered by Bandicuti. And when RQ looked at that, you're gonna have to give it to Clay. He defended that one with Ghostbusters, but in the end, Bandicuti found the opening. He went out with the BMI. Got back in with the help of Carl Teasy. And the last HP of the minion allowed them to push that one back and Echo goes to the finals because of that. Now, they say their final farewells. That is RRQ, but you have your second grand finalist making their way down the stage. It's Echo from the Philippines. Kingdom has fallen, Echo securing in the last grand final slot. And again, a rematch back from the MPL Philippines season 10. It's gonna be the defending world champions, Blacklist International versus Echo. Even when you look at that last match, RRQ didn't have the right to kind of be strong even in the latter portions of the game. We said that they had to end it by 10 minutes. We said that their power spike is gonna be just dawning afterwards. But argue Hoshi fought valiantly. It's just that in the end, Echo's better draft in the late game and better decisioning just was so good. And Sansan, even when they're like the rookies in here, they're very yep. young. They are performing as if they're veterans here. It's not like every game that Echo plays, it's not one player that carries that game, right? I yes, agree. there might be the MVP for, you know, whoever on that squad. And lastly, it was Sanford, but now you have this game where Sanji popped off and then Sanford picking up again throughout the game. That's the biggest problem. Even for the defending champions, Blackness International, they know this. They've had a taste of this even yesterday. And you remember how dominating a game that Echo won against them. So now, there's a lot of things here to learn, but that's gonna be it for us here on the Caster Desk again. Naisu, Gideon, Wolf, analysts, take it away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Analyst Stand. With me, Mirko and Leo. Mirko, how you feel right now? Surprisingly, I mean, the game was amazing, right? So, sure, obviously a bit sad that RQ lost, but hey, that was insane. And we still get to see the best against the best. And right now, it's the fact though. Philippines is still number one. For a long time, RQ in that game seemed like that was gonna take us to game five. 
I mean, break it down for us, Leo. Let's first start with the draft. What happened in the draft there with RQ and Neko? It's fair to say that RQ had a solid plan, right? First picking that glue made sure that Sanford had a lot to think about. It was clearly going into the hands of R7. But the response of the Farsa X, it doesn't even matter what you put into the other pick, made this game four victory all the more clear because it went into the hands of Sanji. Every single time he went in with a flicker or a combo to get that stun off of her passive, that bought Ooh. so much time and space for Echo for the rest of them, specifically Benny Curie, to own the lane and then own, what, a quarter of the map. Yeah, absolutely. Towards the lake, in mid to lake game, Wynn was landing every hook, you know? But there just wasn't enough firepower from the entire set of RRQ to finish the job. And because they weren't able to finish off fast enough, you know, the backup came and then the rest is history. So let's take a look at the item here. You can see Skylar, which is a full build, it seems like he just wasn't able to peel through all the front line from Echo. The damage just was not enough, right? Usually when you go for a Franco, you want some burst to be behind it so that you can actually take people down. It's not just a random hook out of nowhere. Here, you can really see that RRQ were struggling in the damage department. Clay not dealing enough damage as a Faramis. Again, the glue is more of a distraction and Skylar needs to get to the late game. We did see him finally deal damage in the later stage of the game, but at that point, it's a bit too late. So many frontliners from Echo, and I need to talk about this matchup, right? Because we were talking about it when it was picked in the draft. Glue versus the Lapu Lapu. Now, maybe, sure, Glue's gonna have a little bit more pressure when it comes to wave control and wave clear. But, thing is, they pick up the Farsa, which is much more active on the map early on with the Wings by Wings compared to the Faramis. And it's also an X Factor, because Echo usually, they play around the gold lane, they play around Benny. This game, they said, no, we're going to the XP lane, we're gonna make R7 a non-factor, and they succeeded. It's yep. more of a byproduct how Benny Curie was so successful in this game. He's both the rich guy and the forgotten one. And I think you can add to those total assists, damage to minions and turrets. The fact that throughout all this time that RRQ was fighting four members of Echo, I think it happened in a base push, wherein Benny Curie wasn't even part of the fight. He was in the top lane just... Just shooting like up that. objectives. And that's the story of this game, essentially. I'm, I'm partly believing the fact that Sanford and Sanji are worth three and a half heroes on the map. Just those two. Man, again, just massive shout out to Sanford and Sanji. So, so young. So much potential, but look where they are already. Yep. They're yep. young, they're 16. I cannot believe they're 16. Now, I want to talk about the Faramis pick. That Faramis pick seems a little bit out of place, a little bit too early. You know, you talk about how it was countered by the Farsa, by the Claw. And ladies and gentlemen, let's unveil the MVP of the night. It's gonna be Kyle TZ on the Akai. Hey, I've seen this before. I think it was M2. Oh yeah, best in the world. Again, he's grown, all right? From a Lancelot to a Link to a Benedetta to now the Fredrin and the Akai. We talk about how Sanford and Sanji bought so much of the map, how Bane Cutie reaped all the benefits. TikToks per minute from Yaoi. Forget about it. It's all about Forget about it. Forget Carl, about it. TZ confirmed all the major objectives, Ooh. isolated the right targets, and essentially played distraction, much like how R7 wanted to do, all the while carrying the retribution. Now, I want to say that Carl TZ actually take out Akai okay, twice in tonight's series, right? Every time they took it out, it feels like Echo had a plan, like, like, like an onion, right? Step by step, they're more structured when it comes to every objective fight. You know, with Akai pushing everybody away, with Sanford going to the back line, destructing the entire structure of RRQ. And let's take a look at the heat map of the Kauritis, the MVP of the night. Yep, you see how the layers of the execution this time around worked out. They tried to do it in game two. That's, I think, the game plan. Add layers to your execution so that your opponent gets confused, but now this is how it might look like, right? You see how Carl TZ starts up in that orange buff, goes out to the purple, and then tries a turtle, tries a little bit of a steal, and then bothers Albert? He's doing so much. Again, that's why he's MVP. You can say how well Sanford and Sanji did their roles or the other members, but Carl TZ was doing more than just what we expected. Again, it's very similar to the heat map we saw when Albert got the MVP on the Karina. He, was, he doesn't really care about ganking. It's more of that the utility that he provides around the neutral objectives, right? That's what the utility junglers are made for. Here, you can see a rare case where he was able to gank in the early few minutes here, and it works. He gets to a point where he's already ahead when he actually can force these crazy engages and pickoffs to enable that kill pressure that's already present within Echo's laning. And you can see here, Sanford with just on the back line relentlessly, right? The whole early game, Skylar, it just wasn't able to do too much. And look, how is he coming in, 
even with R7 on top of him, he was like, yeah, it's not even heavy enough, you know? I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and take the Lord away. Which is the story of the whole game, why he's MVP. He's doing so much, peeling, getting objectives, spacing out RRQ, dealing damage, taking damage, and again, the, the numbers don't tell the whole story. Man, I don't know what it is with you Filipinos, but you guys practice your minds off. <laughs> Nicest Filipino. Nicest Filipino, that's why he knows when Occupy Thrones back then was practicing their minds off. But here, you can even see, right, everybody's talking about Indonesia and their mechanics. Echo can level the mechanics. That's what, that's what makes them so impressive here. And on top of that, they can add the macro game, which is just so, so amazing. And here, you get the best.